Hi guys and welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again. Got the hubs mark here with us. So today we're going to take you guys down to the garden but first we figured we share a story that we witnessed from afar and luckily it was from afar. You guys will notice we're in front of our beehives and it's been really hot here in the Hoosier State. It was a hot one, humid, terrible today. But we were inside enjoying our air conditioning when I noticed that the turkeys were down here. And they are never down here, guys. They were down here for the shade. But I noticed that one of them was running across the field and that there were these little things flying around them. They were bees. <laughs> they were bees. So I was sitting at the dining room table where I was working and uh, my wife goes, oh my God, look at the turkeys. And I look out there and they're just, the one's just sticking its head in the grass, wiping its head on the grass, kicking at its head. And it goes trotting off and then all of a sudden you can see a little swarm and all of a sudden it moves to the other turkey starts attacking it <laughs> and we're just watching the whole thing and they did they followed them for they a followed while. them for a really long time mm -hmm. so i'm guessing what happens you guys can see behind me both of our hives are out but these guys are all washboarding and they've been doing it all day long like all day you can't you can't be out here without seeing them i can see this from our house all the way back there mm -hmm. so from afar so the turkeys were down here and i'm guessing they saw them washboard too and decided yum yeah. snacks because they never really bother they've us. never been they down never... here no and the turkeys don't really bother us the bees never attack mm -hmm. us i mean mark got stung in the eye once and it was just because it was Pure like an accident yeah collision course he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and squinted and kind of held the bee against his eye which was <laughs> great <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, it was. But it was, yeah, it was odd seeing them do that. And uh, Ashley was saying that they'll just keep chasing them until mm -hmm. they're out of their territory, which they did. Got near to the chicken coop, yeah, which is probably totally 80 feet away them. before yeah. they finally left them alone. Yeah. So the, if you guys are ever being attacked by a swarm of bees, hornets, wasps, whatever, all of those bugs are territorial. Don't run for water. They will just hover above the water and wait for you to come up, unless you swim off a ways. So you have a choice of drowning or getting stung. <laughs> The choice is yours, choose wisely, <laughs> or you just run as fast as you can, like your rear end's been lit on fire, as far away as you can, because they're territorial. Once mm -hmm. you uh, exit their home home range, I guess you would call it maybe, like yep. a home range, they stop attacking you. So there's that, guys. There's your two cents of how to survive a bee swarm attack. Our turkeys were kind of, they yeah, were lucky. Maybe we'll teach them someday. Yeah. Maybe later. Yeah, maybe later. Peekaboo. Our sunflowers are doing really well. Like, really well. Tomatoes once again. Need to have some neem oil applied and rolled up. Because look guys, look at this growth. I just rolled them up not even a week and a half ago. And they need it again. Look at this little intruder. Oh goodness. Does anybody else marvel at how weeds kind of pick flowers or other plants that resemble them and somehow grow right amix them and just kind of go under the radar? I kind of have to admire their survival instincts if plants even have that. It just has always been something that's really, really fascinated me. But guys, I just came out here because we finally had rain come through. It's been hot, humid, nasty. But look at my corn. <sighs> the corn gods need to smile on me one year. Why? So you guys will notice that way behind me is north, and most of our weather comes from this way, which is west. And we have planted a lot of our taller things against this tree line because most of our weather comes out of the west. And it blocks it from all the wind that could come down and destroy it like it is, but guess where the wind came out of? <laughs> wind came out of the east. So, 
Oh my gosh. I almost can't look at it. It makes me want to cry because like everything was coming up really good. And it's hilarious because the only thing that's standing up where this corn is like trying to fall down are the weeds. The weeds. <sighs> Look guys, BB corn. This is my ambrosia corn. This is the white corn. Look, are you kidding me? Uh. I can only hope that it will recover, but like there's this, look at this, look at this guy. Look at that guy right there. Probably not gonna recover. And if we do a complete update on my corn, my glass gem, are you my glass gems? Guys, tall, lush, beautiful. Also, push down. You guys can kind of see it more like behind me that there's some like right through there that's kind of just like coming up and out. I mean, it all is not lost. I will give it the all is not lost. Um, I'm going to have to do a little research tonight because I'm going to have to let it lie. The soil is still soft, so I don't feel like I'm against the clock in that way, but I'm definitely going to have to do a little research tonight to see what I can do for my corn to get it to recuperate. I've had this happen in the past and some of it will come back up, but a lot of it will just lay down and the corn gods, guys, the corn gods, why do they hate me? Mr. Corn, stay up, try to give him a helping hand, I don't know. Are you just going to take down your brethren? No. So I've leaned him up against... I, I can't do that for all of them though, guys. Oh. So what's going on in my garden besides this? Besides heartache? Oh, little corn, please! Just lean it the opposite way, maybe? and Corn, come on. Like breaks my heart guys on a good note though because I had to go back and re-sow some of my ambrosia because if you followed me when I sowed my garden if you didn't get to see that there's a card up top for you to revisit when I had a vision before I realized all the things about the vision that were incorrect or just kind of didn't work that we'll redo next year but for this year these three rows behind me right through there you see they're a little bit smaller that was my red corn beautiful blood red corn that didn't really germinate well and it figures <laughs> that it's the taller out of everything here so like that guy right there that's red and he is let's see here he is so about waist high starting to tassel so because they didn't germinate really well I kind of gave it two or three weeks to see what was going to happen with it and I decided, hey, let's go ahead and hand sow some ambrosia corn with it, which is the white corn that's over here. That's all falling down. But you guys can see like the little guys were below like that crushing wind and doesn't seem like it's going to affect it. Please corn, please. <laughs> I'll sing to you. You say singing is good for plants, right? can sing you back to health. I will sing you the song of my people. <laughs> it's just one of those moments where it's like laugh or cry and I really want to cry but I'm going to choose to just be ridiculous. Oh, come on corn. Just... And it might be because it, it was like really bad rain guys. Like all of a sudden just came out of nowhere. I don't know, maybe I can set this stuff up. It was funny because like my daughter was at a pool party so I decided to as we were leaving I was like look Mark look how tall and beautiful our corn is. <laughs> Cue the storm. <laughs> Cue the winds. 
it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, I just, I jinxed myself. So, yeah. And I'm still fighting weeds. Looks better through there. I did run my tiller down through there. I need to put more straw around my watermelons here. That's what this whole line behind me is, is watermelons. And it just... <laughs> It's laughter instead of tears. It's just been one of those years where like what I thought was gonna do well didn't do well at all. And what I thought was like, it's not even, let's not lay a dollar on that pony for the race. And they're doing really well, so. But look, we've got green zinnias that are coming up. That's what these little fellers right here are. You guys see it? It's really pretty. He's not all the way opened yet, but he's getting there get there soon. And I've got them in with like my smaller sunflowers and then medium sunflowers, mammoth sunflowers, and then we've got my arch with music of the wind. Can't paint with all the colors of the wind. I haven't learned to do that yet. Come on Disney folks. Name that movie. <laughs> So then we've got my zinnias that are coming. They're beautiful, guys. Like, my zinnias are beautiful so far. And look at this little feller. Just, just look at this little feller. Look at this. Look at this little guy. All the way down. You guys know what that is? That is my loofah. Those are my loofah gourds. They're finally starting to come up. I have one over here where they kind of put down on me. So I'm, I'm not expecting much out of that, but you guys can see like it's starting to, of course it wants to go up the wrong way. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on these guys and maybe tie them off. But you need to go this way, bud. Go this, oh yeah, there you go. So feed them up so that they will, so you can see like right here, there's one right there. Um, let's see where the other, this one, coming down through here. Not as tall, but trying to, to find somewhere so we'll just help him along one of the few things i didn't start was my lufa gourds and i am i guess i'll just call it a learning year for a lot of this but these are really what i can't wait for guys i can't wait for my sunflowers there's just something about the feeling of waking up and seeing like those big huge sunflowers just glistening in the sunrise Chickens are going to roost for the night. Ooh, and then we've got this really cool zinnia. You guys see him? Ooh. Ooh, look at it. It's beautiful. Housing with some weeds that we will yoink right now. Maybe. Ooh, do you have thorns? He doesn't have thorns. So we've got, ooh, we've got a few in here. We'll yoink those later because I'm afraid I'll hurt it. But you guys can see like the rain and intense heat just I can't keep up like I really cannot keep up I can't keep the bugs off my garden this year I've I don't want to use seven and I don't use diatomaceous earth right now because of my bees I want my bees over here to pollinate and sadly most pesticides are not discriminatory on bugs or you can't say, hey, Mr. Pesticide, hurt these bugs or keep them away, but don't hurt my bees. It's, just, I don't know. We've had talks one on one. And I mean, I'm just not getting through to them, guys. So, and try neem oil. And it's slowed down because we have some type of caterpillar. Let's see if we can see some of them under here. That's been eating my cabbage. Now you can tell, like, especially like for this guy right here, there's healthy, nice leaves in the middle, and then on the outside, you just got a lot of damage. A lot of damage. And those were some sort of caterpillar. Um, try to see if I can see any on here. Maybe the neem oil finally worked. And if that weren't just, you know, a whole bunch of oh no's at one time with pests and rain and winds and not being able to take care of anything. I've got blight, guys, I've got blight. So we caught blight early and I've been trimming. I just, this year's a learning curve for me for tomatoes. I usually plant tomatoes and I don't care because I don't like them. 
like my husband will eat them for salsa or I'll use them as like a fodder for animals but usually I just don't care like I don't look for suckers on them I don't care if they're determinants or indeterminates I don't cut off the bottom part I don't <laughs> try to keep them from touching the ground because of blight but this year for some reason I'm, I'm guessing it's quarantine and just being interested more in where my food comes from and how to get it to grow healthy hi Mark hello did you show him the corn <laughs> Looks I the did. Best this year. I know. But did you see all the blowover? Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Saw we had some blowover. nasty wind yeah. from an odd direction. Yeah. <laughs> so I was telling him, see, he knows too. <laughs> we planted up against the woods where our eastern or our western winds won't push it down because we get most of our weather out of the west. And then this one came out of the east. Are you looking at my train wreck? A little bit. It's nothing. It looks good. <laughs> it's He's being so sweet right now, guys. I know it doesn't look good. I know it doesn't look good. I got, I've got cat facing happening in my tomatoes. I've had early blight. So I treated that with like a copper fungicide because it's a fungus that comes from the soil that colonizes and spreads throughout your plant. Now it probably won't kill it, but it'll make it very unhealthy. And if you let it get out of hand, it will kill it. So I've been trying to tell Mark here that I have to watch for that and the more you learn the more <laughs> I think anxiety you get sometimes because you can start looking at things and realizing that's not healthy or that's not the way it's supposed to look and that you actually have a problem that you have to find a solution for if you care if you don't care just let it go but but we care right we do we, we, we do. care <laughs> we care. care a bunch we care a bunch so I've been treating that with like copper fungicides, but I guess there's also another way with baking soda, vegetable oil, and water. The baking soda actually um, smothers the fungus on it and keeps it from colonizing. The oil is only there to help the, yeah, see there, he gave that to me. That's the early blight coming in on them. And the oil only helps the baking soda stick to the plant and the water obviously makes it go a longer way. So that's the next thing we'll be treating with, but you guys, okay, so here's what it looks like, but you guys can probably see back in here. See those leaves with the little black dots on them? That's blight. See that right there? And really you should be trimming your um, plants, your um, tomatoes to where they're 18 inches. Nothing should be below like an 18 inch line. So like really I should cut mine up to about right here and nothing lower that way. That fungus doesn't have anything to colonize on it the and what happens is you'll get a rain or you'll um, be watering your plants and the water splashes things up from your compost or your dirt that holds that fungus and splashes it up onto your plant so if you're 18 inches above the dirt line then i mean it's <laughs> you'd really have to basically give it a really good bath for it to um bump up on your tomato plants so I've got cat facing in my tomatoes because we've had um, no rain, monsoon, no rain, monsoon. So when your tomato fruits are actually growing, the skin will kind of toughen up. And when you get an influx in water, the fruit grows, but it grows faster than that skin can allow it to. So it cat faces and here's what cat facing looks like. There you go, it's a cat face right there. Got it in a couple, you guys can see like right through there, like this fella right here. He's pretty big, he's wanting to, to do it, but yeah. Then you've got these guys over here that look just healthy as can be. You can still eat a tomato if it's cat facing like that. You just can't eat it if there starts to become like rot in those crevices. So as long as like the skin's tough in there and there's no rot or you don't see any disease or decay, they're totally fine to eat. That's a salsa tomato, I guess. But uh, hide it with the spices. Hide it with the spices. If you don't have to look at it, you see little chunks. You don't see the whole tomato. So like sandwich slices, things like that probably don't want to use a cat face tomato this little fella right here like these guys when they get bigger they'll be the ones that you want to use so those are uh, mortgage busters and romas and i've got yellow pears over there and i've got blight in both sides 
and I've got bugs in my cabbage, or not my cabbage, and my cauliflower and my broccoli. And my broccoli's trying to run away, and then my lettuce bolted, <laughs> then my corn fell over. <laughs> it's been one of those seasons where you're just like, laugh or cry, and I'm just gonna, we're gonna, are we gonna cry, Mark? Not too bad. Not too bad, <laughs> only at night when nobody's looking into our pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Only into our pillows. What's your favorite thing in the garden, babe? Strawberries. Strawberries. Didn't get a lot out this yeah. year. Yeah, and that was due to the water too. I guess mm -hmm. I was busy starting seeds and getting them to take root that I didn't really think about watering. Plus we had that late frost. We did have a late frost. He's exactly right. We didn't get any mulberries. So That's no jelly. No jelly. <laughs> My daughter was crushed. That's the whole reason that we're called mulberry. Mulberry Branch Farm. <laughs> That's the whole reason. And we had that late frost that you guys remember it nipped my potatoes over there. Nipped everything. We put in a nuke of bees at 50 degrees in the hive. That was a great day. Day before Mother's Day actually. Like the last frost date on the freaking calendar. And boy did it frost. So we didn't get any mulberries. I was really hoping you guys could see that with us this year. But it's always next year guys. Yeah. You'll see blackberries though. Yep. We got a whole blackberry pasture in the back that we kind of just discovered. So. Yep, no bush hogging back there. No, <laughs> he's been told not this area. Just leave this alone, which I know that's hard I for like you. Blackberries, so <laughs> he it's likes easy to, blackberries. Easy he to. likes the bush hog, but he likes blackberries. So, yeah, that's what's going on in our garden, guys. It's there's it's there's good things. It's a learning season, and you have to have seasons where you learn because then it makes the next season easier <laughs> but you're never finished learning on a homestead if you're growing your own food if you're growing your own livestock anything like that every season is a learning season by trial and error sometimes yeah by trial and error all the time <laughs> but I you just kind of got to roll with the punches and, and take it as it comes because you get victories but you're gonna also have losses and failure but remember we've always said failure isn't the outcome it's a tool for the next experience so that's what we're going to bank on but guys that's going to do it for us here on mulberry branch farm really quick garden tour of what's going on hope you guys enjoyed it if you found yourself enjoying the video go ahead leave us a like give us a comment how's your growing season going in your zone we are actually in zone 5b for those of you that don't know here in the hoosier state we're in zone 5b you found yourself loving us so what's not to love about this face <laughs> what's not to love about that face go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep up with me my little farm my little family we're also on facebook and instagram but until next time guys be nice out there stay healthy see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>